Hello! Welcome to Always Open. On today's show, we're going to be talking about long distance, relation long distance relationships, a confessional, and uh, what you've done to get the attention of someone you've had a crush on. Uh, I'm your host, Barbara Dunkelman, and with me today, I got... I'm a slut. <laughs> I'm Tyler. <laughs> I'm Alana Pierce. Hi. That's it. <laughs> All right, it's we really me. nailed that. It's that was great. Every time it We're makes really me laugh. good at making an intro here. We are so bad at it. Yeah. After this is the 60, 60 something, something episode. episode. And we're still bad at it. Well, that means it's your thing now. Now they have to be bad. People will be like, what is this highly produced right? show that I'm watching? I didn't sign up for this. I know. If I we do. ever like nail the intro, they'll be like, well, Disgusting. I don't want to watch this one. It's professional. Yeah. So. You're a slut? Is yeah. that your new intro? Yeah, I'm a dirty slut. <laughs> Why do you say that? Not really. I'm learning a lot about you right now. <laughs> Well, yeah, we never get to hang out. This is gonna be fun. Now we do. I was gonna yeah. say, is this your first time meeting a lot? No, we met that? before, okay. just with Blaine, and I don't, I don't like Blaine, so like, yeah. I just you, you don't know. tell him about how much of a slut you are. Exactly. I guess. Yeah. I'm having um, a little bit of deja vu because I feel like the last time, I don't know if you were there, but the last time the three of us were around each other was like a holiday party, not this past one, the one before. Was it that. the masquerade? Holiday party? When no one wore a mask. Yeah. Everyone, no, everyone wore a mask for like a photo. As they walked Fuck in, it. they were like, mask on, get off. Well, it's like, um, especially if you're a girl and you do your hair and makeup and like, you don't yeah. want to cover it all it's up. It's also, Versity has so many employees at this point. Yeah. Like, there are so many of you guys that if you're all wearing masks, aren't you like, wait a minute. Yeah. It's like, there are hundreds of us. Which no, person? No, wait a minute. <laughs> like, it's crazy. But I think, I think you were sitting on a couch next to me and then Tyler was here. It was when you spilled that fucking drink on me. All over your vagina. All over me. On your fish dress. A hundred percent, just like a full glass of whiskey. Is that why you called it a vagina? Vagina, yeah. No, I spilled one on you too. I spilled a drink on you that night, and I spilled a drink on you that night. You didn't spill one on all. I did not spill one. I on don't you. remember any of that. But she, night. <laughs> That's you went in the bathroom the and cried because you I were so. I was fucking livid. I was so mad at you. <laughs> you cried? I, it was like an angry cry. Cause like literally he was so drunk and he had a full glass of whiskey and he was sitting right by me and he was just like, huh, huh, and then he literally was just like, oh. and I was just it was, like, it was, it was the whole drink. He did it intentionally? No, 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 it was not intentional. No, he was just like sloppy drunk and I was so mad at him. Okay. And I literally like, I got up and I was like, what the fuck? Like I felt so offended for some reason. You I should. I was drunk too. Well, and I'm glad like, you all made a good impression on Alana. Yeah. She obviously and doesn't yeah. remember. Don't remember. So. The only two times of the past, three years that I've vomited from drinking alcohol have been the past two years, the day after the Rooster Teeth Christmas party. Yeah. Both times. I'll well, let's make it- the next day vomiting. <laughs> three for three. Well, right after like, three. Someone at these open. parties drunking you? I'm like, why would Blaine do that? That wouldn't make sense. <laughs> I like, think it's because we all like to drink and it's always open bar at our parties. Yeah, so that's it's true. Probably just like peer pressure from all of us. Probably. Yeah, like, drink, it's fun drink, drink, until the next day and then it's, yeah. the <laughs> then it's the worst experience yeah. ever. Well, thank you for being here. You're welcome. I'm so happy we finally Can got you on the show. Tell us a little bit about who, who you are. Yes. I work at IGN. Um, I've been in the games industry for seven years now, but I'm also dating Blaine, which is how I became part of the Russo family. Who? Blaine Gibson. I never heard of him. Yeah. Not familiar. Mm. Mm. I, mm -hmm. It's fine. Blaine. I like gets it. that a lot. You're his Blaine. better half. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, I think agree. he's pretty great. He's a good guy. I do like Blaine. Blaine's a good guy. Blaine and I have known each other. He's probably like one of the people I've known here the longest because we went to school together. Yeah. Really? We did. It's I cool. always forget that. Classes together. I got a legit compliment for Blaine. <laughs> oh? I've met some people in my life. I've met a lot of people in Do my people life. Do people just give you compliments to give to Blaine? <laughs> oh, actually, yes, a lot. <laughs> like, um, quite regularly. I know, I know there's, you know, everybody says everybody's awesome, but like there's only a few people I've ever met in my entire life that have a heart of gold. And Blaine is one of those. He's people. a really good guy. It's insane how good of a guy he, he is. He really is. So he All chose right, well, let's my stop friend. talking about Blaine. He's not here. <laughs> you notice how I didn't say you were one of those people. That I said, oh, he's a great guy. Barbara does him. have a heart of gold. <laughs> Just kidding. She bought me a vibe. Oh, right I thought there. you meant I'm not. I don't say he has. <laughs> no, a heart of gold. I was saying I was trying to say you don't have a heart of gold. You're not that great of a person. Mm, I'm, I'm not. You're not. <laughs> my, my heart's like silver. Yeah, it's hey, good enough. It's still better than a regular heart. Maybe silver every once in a while. You know, most of us have that. It's shiny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's work on getting Alana drunk again. Let's yeah. do it. Let's do our shot. This one's Three called the uh, the Purple Gatorade. Okay. And it's submitted so. by Cheryl B. It's, and like it's got blue curacao, sour mix, grenadine, and grape vodka. It, it that sounds like it'd be good. Yeah. It smells nice. Well, cheers. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers to Thank Alana. you, Cheryl B. And Thank Alana. You. And to getting drunk <laughs> at Rooster Teeth. <laughs> Eh. 
Doesn't even taste like alcohol. That yeah. straight up tastes like Robitussin. That's and I, <laughs> a little bit. And I love chugging yeah. that shit. Well, we have more. Blend, we do. Uh, ben made extra. Yeah, we don't have Texas here today, so uh, Ben was our standing bartender. That's good. You did good, Ben. <laughs> Texas would be proud. He would be very proud. All right, well, let's get started with a little icebreaker. We haven't done this one in a while. Probably because it's always difficult for us to think of <laughs> answers for it. I'm already stressing. I'm like, oh no, I forgot. Oh no. No, I wrote them down because I'm a professional. I Probably definitely overheard Alana and Tyler in the makeup room this morning being like, shit, did you think <laughs> <laughs> anything? Uh, but we're going to play Two Lies and a Truth. Okay. I could start. Go for yeah. it. Mine's, mine's themed okay. this week. And I also wrote them down because I forget very easily. All right. <clears throat> First one. Two of these are lies. One of them is a truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I sat front row at a Men Without Hats concert. What is, what is a man without hats? Men Without Hats, the band? Mm -mm. Sounds made up. Uh, do you know the song Safety Dance? Oh, I'm on board, okay. I just heard that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. God knows. <laughs> uh, I convinced my entire class that I was in a Men Without Hats music video, uh, and I had my first kiss to Safety Dance by Men Without Hats. I like the theme. How does it go? Oh, safety it's, Dance. Uh, we can dance if we want to. Oh, we can okay. leave your friends behind. Oh, okay. If your friends don't dance, hey. and if they don't dance with well, them, no friends of mine. Okay, I know that song. Mm -hmm. That's the only song of theirs that anyone knows. <laughs> that's the, that's the big hats. one. Okay, so we have to guess which one of those is, is Front row, true. Music video. Set. First kiss. So it's, yeah, set front row at one of their concerts. Okay. Convinced my class that I was in one of their music videos. Okay. And had my first kiss to Safety Dance. Number two. That's this the truth. truth. You think number two is I three. think that's difficult though because the entire class, like, what did you take a survey? Do you like, <laughs> please fill this out. Do you believe me, yes or no? Hmm. I think it's the third one. I think it's first kiss. I'm going to go first row. Oh. First row? All oh, so right. you are all the way around. Yeah. All right. This means I did a good job. <laughs> uh, I convinced my whole class I was in a uh, ah, Without Hats yeah. music video. Look at that. So the only that. song that anybody knows, Safety Dance, mm -hmm. uh, there is a blonde girl in that music video. And also, this was like in the 80s that they filmed this. So the fact that I was able to convince anyone that that was me, because this is like a 25-year-old woman, um, and I convinced them that that was me. Because she's blonde and she's like dancing around and you kind of see her. And I convinced my whole class that I had filmed in that music video. Like, that's pretty great. Right? Hmm? That's cool. Yeah. So y'all know this woman. You do. Yeah. You know her better than we do, obviously. Mm -hmm. And if you ever see the music video, you'll be able to find out why I was able to convince them. Because she is very, like, floofy and aloof. <laughs> and I feel like I was very floofy and aloof as a high school student. Oh, you oh, still you are. Oh, you were in high school. I was in high school. Okay. Mm. You still are. It's one of my favorite things about you. Thank you, Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> floofy to me means fluffy. Yeah. Like a dog can be floofy. So I was like, wait a minute. I'm sorry, I had, what? I had very big floofy hair. Yeah, okay. I guess. I also <laughs> like the word floofy. Floofy. It is it's good. a great word. Yeah. It's a good yeah. Word. Great word. Are you next? Are you going to go? No, I'm going to, I'm going to pat, you know, ladies first. Okay. Is yes. that because you're panicking? Because you haven't figured them out? <laughs> I'll, right. them. I'll go next. How about that? When, okay. when, when did you guys have your first kiss? Oh. Do you remember when it was? Mine was in a cinema. I had braces at the time. And it was the ending uh, credits to this movie that was about this boy band that came back and became a boy band again when they were like in their 50s and they wrote all these songs about menopause. So it was like a comedy, but I don't even remember the name of it. It was some Australian movie and uh, oh, it was gotcha. a truly terrible kiss. He didn't close his mouth. So I thought like it was my first boyfriend. I thought for a while that that was a thing that you didn't close your mouth while kissing. So it was just like a uh, kind of situation. Was there tongue in there? Yeah. Ooh, okay. But it was just oh. open tongue for a while. Uh, mm. It wasn't great. Mm. What was yours, Meryl? I don't remember. Oh, you, I, we've asked you this before, and you always say you don't remember. How do you? I, I don't work because it probably wasn't that memorable. Ooh. Um, I did have my very, like, very, very, very first peck was. That's what it was. Okay, my very first peck was in pre-K. Pre-K? Wow. <laughs> Does that even count? Yeah. It was steamy. <laughs> Little boy named Robert. Just nice. like so cute. next to the Lego block. Sometimes I wish I could find him. <laughs> Just be like, what's up? I'm gay now, Robert. <laughs> you you did me this. Um, and then I think like I think it was like a spin the bottle situation. I think that's why it wasn't so memorable. You, oh, I was like in pre-K? I mean, yeah. yeah. Spin the bottle? Spin the baby bottle. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it was like a friend's like my parents' friends' kids. Oh, okay. When you're like, young and just yeah. like experimenting. Yeah. My first kiss was a uh, at the front of a cruise ship when I was 15. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Did he this hold post Titanic? You? It was post Titanic. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I was on a cruise ship and I was hanging out with the it was like the ages 15 to 18 who like got to hang out together. Mm. And there was a, a and I've told the story on the podcast before. There's a, it was a guy named Russell. He was 17 and he was from Utah and he was six foot five. 
Wow. And, and he was an amazing kisser. I, as little 15 year old Barbara, I got so wet. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Ew. I don't think about Barbara. <laughs> Barbara. I wouldn't guess that a guy from Utah could kiss her. There you go. Yeah. Do you Mormon? I, I don't know. Isn't most of Utah like, wouldn't you, like, what's the population there that is Mormon? Isn't it like 98%? A huge majority, yeah. Is it? It's not, I don't know if it's the whole state or if it's just Salt Lake. I imagine it's not the whole state. I don't know. Everyone that I've ever met from Utah is either Mormon or was Mormon. Same, actually. Maybe I'll look them up. Mormons, Mormons are fascinating people. Let's say what's that? If you go read their rule book. Yeah, they can only play half court basketball. Only what is that about? Wait, what? I have Mormon family. My dad's Ask parents are Mormon. There's like tons of like rules. Like there's. Isn't it just when you're on a mission though? Yeah, it's, it's when you're on a mission trip. It's like a woman can't finish her homework until after after Amanda. Or there's some. There's like weird things people will leave comments in. There were definitely videos. things that happened in my childhood where if I was around my dad's parents that we would have a different set of rules. Like I wasn't allowed to wear a bikini, I had to wear a one piece. So there was like a different version of family rules when we were in front of my dad's parents. Interesting. And they were super lovely people. Huh. Didn't they come up with um, soaking too? Yeah. Oh, is that where you like I'm just pretty sure that's dip your thing. dick? Yeah. Oh, with the like sheet? Sit. Put your dick through that. But no, you just like put your dick in the vagina. Yes, right? but you just yeah. leave it there. You just let yeah. it sit. You just let it soak. When really? It? Yes. Oh, this is going to be a good tie into our confessional. That's good. I like that. That's interesting. But first, I want to hear your two lies and a truth. Um, okay, I'll go. I'll let Tyler still think. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right, I've never eaten tuna. I broke my arm playing softball. And I wanted to be a country singer growing up. Hmm. Those Man, are all good. Always good at this yeah. game. I feel like I'm always terrible at this game. No. Because, like, all of those could be true. Liar. What was the first one again? No, we never eaten tuna. tuna. Damn it. Third one is what? Third one, country singer. The That's truth? the truth? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that you broke your arm playing softball. All right, mm -hmm. then I'm gonna go with tuna. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, a, uh... <laughs> I was gonna try to come up with some, like, yes? tet, 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 but that's not the right, <laughs> uh, that's not the right word for it. Um, Split audience. I've never eaten tuna. It, it just, it, it just I haven't eaten me the fuck out. I haven't either. Never eaten tuna? Mm -mm. Even, like, sushi? Uh, That's why I call bullshit. I've cooked tuna. You never had cooked, never cooked tuna. Cooked, cooked. Been with you to so sushi. So maybe, maybe, um, mm, mm -hmm. maybe I messed up on this. Game. Maybe you did. <laughs> I was you just did. like, if you've had sushi before, it's very likely cooked you've tuna. Been. I totally cooked haven't had tuna. tuna even in sushi though. It's the smell. It's just like, oh, anyway. yeah, I just, oh, I just fish out of a bag, man. Not tuna me. in a can, terrible. Uh, tuna raw, excellent. I love really? tuna in a yeah. can. I'm not. Yeah, I eat the yeah. tuna in the can too, but like I'm just saying. Oh yeah, I eat that stuff just right out of it. Oh, it what? smells so bad. Yeah. It tastes so good. Tuna salad? Oh. Mm. I just like it, you it kiss the butthole and the butthole mm. explodes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what would happen to me if I ate tuna. I think. <laughs> you would just, your butthole butt would, would explode. It's, it's good. Mm -mm. No, not for you. Mm, not for me. It's good for you. And there's mercury in it, so you know it's really good. Is that a thing? No, yeah, it's a real thing. Isn't like mercury that? terrible for you? FDA approved. Eat all the mercury. I, I could have sworn that you broke something playing softball. Broke my ankle playing softball. Motherfucker. That's the thing. You take the truth and then you That's add a little That's what I did. All it. of mine are like slightly yeah. off. Yeah. See, yeah. we're gonna. Yours is gonna be hard for us because we don't know you as well as we know each other. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Shall I? Go, Go for it. Yeah. Okay. When I was eight years old, I was attacked by an emu. Okay. She's Australian. Yeah, I am Australian. And I hear that if you ever go there, you, you should be You'd prepared be to die. Right. It's amazing that I'm still alive. <laughs> uh, Where are you going? Tyler, what are you doing? Did you just go and fart? No. <laughs> that would have been very polite, though. I yeah. could have, though. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Emo. Okay. Second one, uh, I made out with a famous New Zealander singer, a Kiwi, New Zealander. The third one is I have seven and a half tattoos. The half makes because is isn't a half tattoo still a tattoo? I guess if you, I don't know, unless you only unless got half of it, not like complete. I yeah. Guess. All right, take the clothes off. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I, I guess. I know you have tattoos. But I could only really see like one or two. Yeah, I saw one on your arm earlier. Ooh. I'm gonna say that you made it with a kiwi, mm -hmm. a famous kiwi singer. That one. I, I, I hope I don't. I let me. I don't hope you got attacked by it, <laughs> yeah, but I hurts. hope that there's a story behind that. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Okay, you're all wrong. It's the tattoos one. Oh, you have seven and a half this tattoos. This one is half removed. Oh, I had writing on this wrist. Ah. And it's half gone. Well, it doesn't even look like anything anymore. Yeah, because it's it's just a 
Oh, it, it works still... super well. Tattoo yeah, remover works super well. Good. I was attacked by a cassowary, which what is an emu that? that just has like a big old horn on its head. They're much scarier, frankly. <laughs> Those are yeah. deadly, right? Oh, they're pretty Wait, brutal. Yeah. How and how? where and what yeah. was the circumstance? I believe we were staying on a farm at the time, and it, they just had a bunch of cassowaries that just hung out. And fun fact about emus and cassowaries, they make this sound that sounds like bass. If you've never heard them before, it sounds like they're making just, like, it sounds like someone's playing music. Oh, my God. And as you get closer to them, you'll just, like, hear the bass increase, and it's really weird. So you hear this, like, it's like impending throbbing deal. kind of noise, and it's just like, oh, no, it's closer. It's like some alien shit. And you can just like slowly hear it getting closer. But uh, the cassowary basically just found me, chased me for a really long time. My mom had to like pick me up and run and get us into this outhouse and shut the door so that I didn't get fully attacked. Holy by the shit. It's pretty intense. That's those, terrifying. Those yeah. Are those one with the feet? Do they kick? They can. They get those big old. I all have feet. I, yeah. I picture this huge, I picture a huge ostrich with a horn on its head that looks like a unicorn. And then uh, super bass, like slowly, like. Quietly, like Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj, super like super bass, quietly playing in the distance, and then the closer it gets, it's just like. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I really want someone to do an edit of that right now. There you go. Of like one of those with that song plays. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I was in Australia and I heard it's quakas. Yeah. Where it sounds like little monkeys, like. Yeah. <laughs> like it literally They've, sounds like that. Oh, that would be a kookaburra. Kookaburra. That's quakas the are also very cute. Like They're the ones that are always smiling. Yes. So why yes. is it that everything in Australia is trying to kill you? What? It's not really a thing. It's not really a thing. Well, you just a lot of pulls on that from the table. <laughs> you guys have the deadliest spider. You have the deadliest snake. Yeah. Well, those are two things. But you see them very rarely, <laughs> so it's like I've never seen any of the most deadly. Also, spiders. like I assume where you're from, like you live in a city. Yeah. Like you're not in the outback somewhere. It's the same thing. Like people in Canada are like, oh, like have you seen polar bears and moose and like all this stuff? I'm like. I live in a city. I'm not like walking around in the wilderness. Yeah. It's also just I'm way more scared of guns than I am of animals. So being in the US mm. is like, yeah. Mm. At least animals you could like <clears throat> kill and yeah. Yeah. You kill people too, Barbara. You can. It's true. But you can't kill guns. You can also legally, can fun fact, kill guns. camels in uh, Australia. What? Yeah, there's too many camels in the outback. So legally, you're allowed to motor camels if you want to. I haven't seen a single camel in Australia. I know. I didn't even didn't know, know until I found out you could kill them. Maybe that's why you can't. I have a it. I have a question. Um, what's what's the beef between Australia and New Zealand? Well, I've asked New Zealanders. Mm -hmm. Never asked an Australian. Half of my family is from New Zealand, so okay. I it, I feel like it's made up. Okay. Yeah, I don't okay. feel like it's a real thing. I think the accents are very silly. But <laughs> aside from that, I feel like we're just it's like a it's just like a sibling relationship. Okay. Yeah. Mm. My favorite way show is the Today Show that you guys have. Oh, it's a good show. It's so funny. Yeah. It was, if well, it you guys don't good. know, it's they're just hilarious. Yeah, Australian breakfast shows or morning shows. Um, what's that guy's name? It's Carl Stev Stevanovich. Stevanovich. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, they just get real crazy and don't really have a filter and like just will make innuendos the whole time and just crack up laughing mm -hmm. at it. Whereas it's great. Here mm -hmm. it's, it's great. like it's super professional. Yeah, it's great. I miss gotcha. those. Yeah. Tyler, did you think of anything? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Tyler. That's you want to okay. just move on to our confessional? Yep. Because I think you'll have something to contribute to this. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're in a you're in a, a mood today, and I love it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go. What is, yep. Give me this confessional. <laughs> All right. This is submitted by anonymous, aka Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 22 year old guy. Sure you are. Um, and because I had a very isolated upbringing, I've had zero relationships and have never dated. In order to get more confidence and learn how to be comfortable about being intimate with someone, I've decided to contact an escort. After a, long, uh, a lot of research and finding the right provider, I made an appointment. I was upfront about my lack of experience and that I wanted to learn, and she was very understanding and comforting. We actually spent a lot of time talking and getting comfortable, but then she moved things along and we went down on each other. Unfortunately, since everything was so new, even kissing, I was a bit overwhelmed and was basically thumbing in a softy when we tried to have sex. Aww. But honestly, I really don't care because I wanted uh, some experience being intimate with someone, which is exactly what happened. Overall, I had a really great time and I'm glad I did it, but because of the stigma around sex work, I can't tell anyone in my life about it. What are your thoughts? First of all, I love the term thumbing in a softy. <laughs> yeah, I had to amazing. visualize it. Because I've been in situations where I've had people thumb in a softy. And then you get going a little bit. In America, we call drunk. it pushing rope. I just feel like it would hurt. Would it hurt? No, for, it's just like basically like. Oh, what? For him? I don't know. I have no, no idea. No, it's just frustrating. It's just frustrating. 
it's really frustrating. Because you want to be hard. You want to be hard. Yeah. yeah. I don't think women know that. Like, or I'm sure they do no, to some extent. Yeah. Yes, you guys do, but. I've been with guys before where it's like clearly they're either like drank too much or like are too excited or overwhelmed. Yeah, whiskey dick. Like, yeah. it's definitely a thing. And it's so frustrating to be so horny and you can't, and your dick can't do shit. You just slap it around a little bit and say, yeah. wake up. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that was a thing. The, I understand the, the frustration in this because there is such a stigma around sex work. I think it's a really sweet story. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, it's like very I, that's, sweet. I think it's super sweet, and I don't think there should be a stigma around it. I don't see the problem with that. But especially when it's someone who just wants to experience these things and like eventually feel more comfortable when that does happen for him. Yeah. And there's a way to go about it that's like safe and healthy. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it is. Right. If it's through a provider and like a an actual escort service, not when just like. Twenty-six also not that young though. That old though. What am I trying to say? <laughs> I know I know people who've been older than 22 who haven't lost their virginity or yeah. kissed anyone. Right. So it's like I, I hate that there's a pressure on people at the same time to be like, oh, but I'm 22, I have to kiss someone. It's like, well, mm. there are loads of people who haven't by that age. Like, it's not as as big of a deal as everyone makes it out to be. For yeah. Sure. Right. Unless you have friends that are like pressuring you and stuff like that, which yeah. could be really. Annoying. Get new friends, man. Get new friends. That's a good. Yeah. <laughs> good call. The escort thing is also cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I get the not being able to tell anyone though, and like not yeah. being able to like. I mean, I don't know, not brag about it, but like, well, this, oh, I mean, this was a thing I did. Even just mentioning it to anybody yeah. would be like, yeah, there'd be the stigma and people would probably like shame you for it or make you feel bad for it in some way, which is kind of unfair. Yeah. We want to find out because I have something going on on Tuesday that relates to this. Do you? I do. D do so tell? I didn't, <laughs> <laughs> so I did, I did not hire an escort, but I'm trying out something that is very much along the lines of this where it is simply like not a business transaction, but it is simply for one purpose and one purpose to meet up, and that is it. Like with a, a, a person you know? An anonymous person I know, yes. Like okay. no last names, no phone number, we're meeting up at this time. It's wow. fucking crazy. I was gonna call you, I always call Mariel or my cousin and be like, hey, I'm going to this place with this girl. Like if I'm not so back in three yeah. hours, like yeah. So That's interesting. I'm gonna see how it goes. This person, like this is great. Like I hate the stigma that, that comes with this. I'm very much a person, there's so many people out there too, that enjoy their independence, but need comfort from time to time, not all the time. Yeah. Some people are just not good at relationships like myself. It's just, I'm not. I would love to have somebody that a few times a week, maybe just once a week, I could just meet up with, talk, and have sex with. Have like this guy did. Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah. It'd be amazing to just get your fill if you're somebody like me who just needs that every once in a while. Yeah. I was single for two years before I started dating Blaine, and the thing I missed the most was just cuddling. It was just spooning. Yes. Yeah. I was just like, I just want to, can I just cuddle someone? And then I just started cuddling people's dogs. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, you have a large dog. Just going to come up there and but cuddle. Yeah, you don't realize, like, just a hug, too. Yeah. Like, like a nice, warm hug from someone that you Like, holding get. hands with someone. It's like that kind of stuff you, you really miss. Yeah. And I think it's really sweet also that, like, obviously this person's getting paid, so they're probably willing to do pretty much anything, but that they're willing to be patient and, like, be cool that this guy had never experienced all this stuff and to kind of, like, be there and, like, talk, like, Walk them through it. Well, yeah. I feel like it's like anything, right? Like if you, not necessarily like a, a mentor type of thing, but like if you want to learn how to get better at makeup, like people will go to classes or they'll, they'll try and like do things. If you want to learn get yeah. better at cooking, they'll go to a cooking class or whatever, you know? So that's why friends with benefits is such an interesting idea to me, where it's like just two friends who want to experience that together and have that kind of relationship. As long as both of you understand the ground rules of it and like what the intentions are. Yeah. I think it's like totally doable. Yeah. Totally it's just America. We're so uptight about everything. I think in other places, like you go over to Europe, it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah. Well, Everywhere swinging else. Swinging their like, dicks around. Just, <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows, and it's not this, we are bred in America to be terrified of sex, whether that be and because nudity. of religion or anything else, pressure, societal pressures, anything. Yeah, nudity, we can't do that. My God, this country took how many years before a woman could show her ankles? There's still parts of the world where you can't even show your face. Yeah. We're terrified of it. Yeah. And once you get past that, there shouldn't be a stigma. It's just because. I think it's because it's seen as being so powerful. Yeah. Like you can manipulate someone with sex really easily, but that's it shouldn't be that way, and it no. wouldn't be that way if we didn't treat it like it was the most important thing in society of it. But we totally that's very do. Very true. Very true. Well, essentially, what are your thoughts? He asks. I don't think there's anything I'm wrong with it. Good for I support you. you. As long as you're being safe. Yeah. Like obviously, I would not recommend maybe like finding someone who's like hooking on the corner of a street. And go in that direction? Hey. Like if it's through a service? High class. I would say to this guy, dude, DM me. I want to 
tell me about the service. I want to know. Like, can you give me the hookup? <laughs> well, you're not with that one specifically because you. I don't want that. But like, maybe somebody else would be okay. You're gonna have to give us an update after your. I am gonna give you an update. Business transaction. I really wish it was just like a, a rent a friend, but with that. Yeah. There needs to be that. Is I could that be. Not basically, I'm what be Tinder the, is. It, it, well, well oh, you know. Oh, well, you should get on a grinder. Have we talked about this? If, I, if only I was gay. Works? But isn't it just it? It's for. Gay people. Right? Oh no! Oh, no, but it is people, a total. Like, it's just like. It's oh no! Just it's sex. just like a hundred percent. Just like. Well, I know people who like have just wanted to meet people um, of the same sex, and it's difficult, I guess, on on Tinder or other dating apps. So they tried Grinder, and they said like it's hard to find someone who they just wants to meet up and go on a date. Wow! Yeah. Because everyone's just there for sex. Yeah. So I just started a podcast where we read misconnections, basically, and <laughs> so <laughs> many of them, uh, misconnections like on Craigslist, where like someone's like, "Hey, I saw you here," or. Want to meet up with this? It's sometimes whatever. sweet and sometimes very creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly really sexual, but I've learned some interesting shit about society. And the main thing is the amount of listings that are, hey, happily married with kids, just looking to suck a dick. Uh, <laughs> hit me up if you're interested in having your dick sucked. Totally not gay. Just let me know. And you're like, okay, well, what if you like said that you were bi? That's also fine. But they're like, and there's so many of them. Like, straight dude here. Just want to suck a penis. Let me know if yours <laughs> is available. It's crazy. I want to know if there's those so many. Through and work. I Wait, imagine so. Is that misconnections or there is another area of Craigslist that's like? It's on misconnections. There's but there's another there area like of Craigslist seeking? that's like yeah seeking. It's like man for man, woman for woman, man for woman, whatever. There's yeah. like all sorts of things that you can find on there. You could you could easily find someone to bone on Craigslist. We should do Definitely. some Craigslist segment on this show. I it's feel. fascinating. It is just a minefield. And terrifying. I've seen people <laughs> yeah. like, uh, I've seen Craigslist posts for people who are like, I will suck dick for this concert that I can't get a ticket to. <laughs> like, let me know. I will meet all you right, at the All right, I'll delete yeah. my posts, okay? <laughs> just so many of them for, from dudes who are like totally straight, not at all gay. This isn't a gay thing. Just let me see your dick. <laughs> not gay. Just two dudes wanting to hang out. And I was wondering if maybe it's like married guys who are like, it's hard for me to have sex with my wife. It's so much easier if I just have sex with a man. Yeah. And they just, they're still in love. They just want to get like, their rocks off? Just want to have sex. What's that vine? It's like uh, the two guys sitting in a hot tub five feet away because they're not gay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the equivalent of that. Like, Let me see your dick. I want to put your dick in my mouth, but I'm not gay. It's not a gay thing. I just want to put your dick in my mouth. Well, does, <laughs> anyone, gay, does anyone ever ask to see your undies? Yeah. Perhaps your me undies? Ooh. Segway. Segway. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard me talk about me undies, and you know, uh, I am a big believer in their product. They're the perfect balance of comfort, fit, and every month they have a new and exciting print and they arrive at your door in a fun bag. I'm actually wearing some right now. Nice. Um, I think, and I've talked about this on other podcasts before, I think I've transitioned almost all my underwear to MeUndies. Uh, Lane talks should. about them all the time. They're yeah, amazing. they're great. Uh, and I'm always worried that me and Trevor are going to be wearing the same pattern um, <laughs> at times. Because they, they also have cute get sports me bras too. They have mm -hmm. sports bras. They also have like joggers. Yeah, they have everything. T-shirts. They're like they're going to replace my whole wardrobe at some point, <laughs> and I'll be okay with it. I'll call them me clothes. At nice. that point, <laughs> you've been working on that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Two seconds. Uh, Meandies uh, uses lensing micromodal in their underwear. It's sustainably sourced, naturally sought fiber that starts with beechwood trees and ends with the most amazing fabric you've ever experienced. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Meandies guarantees you will love their undies or your money back. Meandies has a great offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, when you purchase any Meandies, you get 20% off and free shipping. MeUndies is so sure you'll love their underwear, they are offering a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your first pair, you'll get a full refund. This is a no-brainer. Get 20% off a, a pair of the most comfortable undies you'll ever put on. To get your 20% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com open. That's MeUndies.com open. So many numbers in that. 20% off, 100% guarantee, free shipping. They got it. I got, I got mine on. Nice. Oh, you stand do. up. Let us see him. You, I could see by the purple. Well, the, yeah, the purple. purple. Oh, do they all have purple on I, I only yes. wear me undies. It's the best. Yeah, they really are. Mainly for the dude, the cuppage area is supreme. That's what they it say. They, they, they'll take care of your crown jewels. It is so, wow. and it's symmetrical. It's cool, man. I guess I did, wouldn't know that because I don't have junk. Makes that penis <laughs> yeah, pop. That makes sense. Really yeah. does. <laughs> really it does. sure does. Gives <laughs> it a good volume. It's like a push up bra for your dick. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Let's put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the next segment we're going to get to is a question from Maya S. I think I'm pronouncing that right. M-A-Y-A? Yeah. Maya? Um, and Maya wants to know, what's the weirdest thing you've done to ever get the attention of someone you have a crush on? 
<laughs> so mine is pretty funny. What'd you do, Barbara? I started watching Red vs. Blue to impress a For guy. For a boy? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, because my, well, I had heard about the show beforehand because my brothers all watched it um, and they watched it with their friends in the same room that I would hang out in, in my house. So I'd heard the show before and I was always like very disinterested because it just sounded like loud, stupid jokes. Um, and I was trying to listen to the Backstreet Boys and it was getting in the way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's a guy who I had a crush on who I was talking to and I saw in one of his like online bio things, he had a quote from Red vs. Blue that I recognized. <laughs> and so I messaged him and I was like, do you like Red vs. Blue? And he messages back and he goes, do you like Red vs. Blue? I've never met anyone who's seen that show. And I was like, yeah, I love it. It's my favorite. <laughs> and like right after that conversation, I went online and I watched everything. I like binged <laughs> the entire series and then started to like it. That's crazy. But so the reason you're here is because of because a crush. Of that dude. Trying to impress a guy. Do you think he looks back on that and he's like, fuck, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> does he know that? I don't know if he does. Huh. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't know if he knows that I technically lied about it. Like, I had heard about it, so I guess. Well, you recognize the quote, so yeah. it counts. It counts. I watched that show when it was on Google Video before YouTube was a thing. Oh my god. Yeah, it was back oh. in the day. I think like it was like season one. 2003? Yeah. It was like before y it was even on YouTube and then it came out on DVD and I like just lost my mind. It was like hard to explain to my parents. They're like, so these people play video games and then record them? I was like, it's, <laughs> don't even, it's fine. <laughs> it's become a very big deal, it's fine. <laughs> and you're like, an emu is attacking, run! <laughs> Cassowary. Cassowary. My bad. <laughs> I'm not going to remember that word at all. Gosh, I'm trying to think. I once kicked a hole in a wall. Because I dropped kicked a wall before. That is impressive. Like, impress someone? I'm aroused. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I was in. Um, I think I was in like a freshman or an eighth grade, and there was this girl that I had a crush on who was a friend of mine, and they came over to my house, and you know we we're just being stupid young teenagers, and I started doing this thing where like I would jump over my de my bed, and hit the wall, on purpose. On purpose. And like f do a weird flip thing. I don't know. I was very limber at that age. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not so much anymore. Um, but then at, at one point, I did it and ended up kicking a hole in the wall. And she... She loved it? Yeah, she was... She her panties just, just took dropped? Her clothes off right there in, in front of all of our friends. Lucky lady. Congrats. No, then we spent the next, like, 30 minutes panicking. I was crying because <laughs> I was like, <laughs> parents were going to find out. I think, I think we ended up literally, like, making a really shitty collage with my name and, like, pasting it on the wall. And you could totally tell there was a hole on like the E of my name uh -huh. <laughs> right behind it. It didn't take my mom too long to figure it out. I was gonna say, she probably. Uh, There's been other things that I've done. Use her that detective are, skills. That are, what are you doing? What back are you doing there? back there? Sorry, this is my phone is back there. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be back there. Just. Uh, just. There you go. It's fine. You didn't oh have God! To throw it on the wall. <laughs> like, just, just get put it, out it on of silent. I throw my phone. It's a life proof. It can't be broken. It's fine. But like Makes I throw, I throw my phone sometimes when I get angry. You said I'm that sorry, about continue. the Titanic. <laughs> you were talking about hot lesbian sex. Continue. Yeah, fourteen. Yeah. That's. Oh, it's not okay. Think All about right. that. Think about that. How's that oh, feeling? Yes. You were telling the story. <laughs> I mean, not come that on. Story. Very different yeah, stories. It didn't, yeah, it didn't, didn't, didn't she go that way. She was crying after kicking a hole in the wall. Yeah. Um, I really missed a lot. I think I was. There was a there was another girl that I really had a crush on who was like front desk at the Holiday Inn. Oh yeah. Town. And I found out on like a Thursday night, like a school night, she was working like an overnight shift. And I was like, I'll go spend it with you. Like, let me yeah. hang out. I told my parents I was spending the night with a friend and then like was miserable one hour in because mm -hmm. it was an overnight shift at the fucking holiday. That's end. pretty cute though. Uh, she wasn't into it. So oh. it just really just sucked for me. So it was like you were just trespassing at a certain point. <laughs> just like, please get out of here. At one point I became a solicitor. It was just like, <laughs> So you give me a room. Don't you live in this city? <laughs> Go home. <laughs> You're like, one room, please. Yes. <laughs> I have no money, but please let me go to sleep. I feel like we've all done really stupid things, so especially as kids, to get the attention of someone you have a crush on. Yeah. Definitely when I was young enough, yeah. I did shit like that, like yeah. flips. We're like trying to do a flip and just fail. <laughs> yeah. We're like, he's gonna love it. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be, it's gonna be so impressive. Blow everyone's minds. I'm pretty sure I did something at summer camp with the, like, there's a group of guys. And whenever there's a group of guys around me, I like always try to do something, like, especially as a kid. Try to do something to impress them because mm -hmm. you think like they're all gonna look because they're uh, like you know mm -hmm. dumb guys. So I tried to do like a dive into the pool and a belly flopping, uh, and they reacted not very well. It's not great. Didn't get a single digit out of that. Oh, not one. Not, not one number. Not a single digit. Although I was like 13. 
Well, that's probably for the best. Her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. What have you done? Probably a lot of stuff, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm just. I, I don't know uh, crushes. If I ever did anything to impress a crush, but like maybe impress somebody I'm kind of like with or started dating. Mm -hmm. Accounts. Oh, fucking first date, I painted this girl's house. You remember that? Yeah, I remember that. God, I had you a also paint. took up acro yoga for a second oh, there, and I was like, "Bitch, I what remember. are you doing?" <laughs> you did a lot of like weird. You shit. you you adapt to the person okay, that you're dating. Okay, that's a lot of stories here. And you 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 are we're gonna we're gonna expose you right now. I'm gonna <laughs> Fine, expose. Fine, I don't you. give a fuck. Do it. Ooh, it's definitely not, not thing, defensive though, at all. But you, you definitely um, adapt to the person that you're dating, and which I don't think is a bad thing. I think a lot of people do that. Yeah. At least I'm glad we've never had this conversation before. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying it's a, I, I think it's a good quality of yours that you're like, oh, this person that I'm with or like or interested in likes this thing. Like, I'm going to also get into that thing. Or this like, is important to this person. Yeah, Let me it's show not a bad interest. thing. So you're saying a good thing to me, so I shouldn't be defensive. Yes! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're, you're defensive. This is a compliment. Please okay, calm good. down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Alana. Please help us. <laughs> yeah, I do those things. I, I recently took care of a girl for a week and a half who had yeah. tonsillectomy, and, like, she couldn't talk, so I got her groceries and... That's very sweet. But painted. then it bit you in the ass. Yeah. And then yeah. she, yeah, then she broke up with him. Oh. And so I. have After least sleeping with me, and then told me she still wanted to sleep with me, but she just not know me as a person. And I painted that girl's house, and then she went to fucking South America. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Oh wow, man. this is a very layered story. Well, I was like, I get that, like, if she's not into you as a human, then being like, still want to sleep with you. Yeah. If it's that on the table, I feel like that's not totally unreasonable. It's not, but we'd been like seeing each other for two months. Yeah. She should have told you that earlier. Should have told me that. Yeah. Earlier, which is okay. Yeah, because at that point, like, especially two months into it, you're invested. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, at least you wasn't... painted her house, damn it. Yeah, that's, oh, that that's manual labor. Oh, that was a different, was a different girl. Girls. I painted okay. her house. Literally, our first date is I'm painting her house and moving her in. And then she went to South America. That wasn't Which um, was this? using you? Are you, you sure that was a date? Yeah. I won't say the name. I'll say that she works at a company that sets up a lot of music festivals. Okay. So she had to travel. Gotcha. And she was British, yeah. which was cool. Okay. My girlfriend once went on a date with a guy just to get rid of moving boxes. <laughs> so happen. It. You know, sometimes you just got to... You gotta, gotta do, do things, you gotta, you gotta find So basically, gotta find yeah, I don't have, uh, I don't do things for crushes, I just get used by women. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. Let's but really, go. do you have a dumbest thing you've done for a crush, <laughs> yeah. though? Like, what is the dumbest? I don't know. There's just too many? I'm trying to think if I There's have any too many. Tyler yeah. stories, Tyler and women <laughs> stories. I have, I date trash. That's my bugaboo. Is I Which is it. weird because like every girl I've met that you've dated, I've actually liked, and then like I find out after the fact. Well, no, I bring those around. You don't bring the garbage can to your friends. Just you don't bring just it in the one. house. You take it outside the house. You don't let. I <laughs> show Mariel my it. trash, you know, and she gets so it. mad. Yeah. Oh, she's yeah. Like, Come on. I know you. I know you. You can do better. Well, have you ever been in a long distance relationship? I have. Have you? Mm-hmm. And I know you are. Obviously, I am. Well, let's let's segue into our next question, and maybe we could uh, talk about dumb stuff we've done for long distance relationships. Um, this one's from Tony K. In your experience, what does it take to make a long distance relationship work? I feel like you should take that one, right? I have a really uninteresting answer. I find it very easy. Like Blaine and I have been distance for two years. We've been distance from the very start, and it works because we're really independent people. I'm really busy. I'm traveling all the time. He's super busy all the time. So it's like, just kind of works perfectly. Do you feel yeah. like it worked because it started off long distance? Like, would it have been more difficult if you guys totally. were together and then had to but separate? But before we started dating, I already knew my job was so demanding. Like, even going into it, I was like, I could not date someone I lived in the same city with because they would hate. So I knew that yeah. if I was going to have a relationship, it would have to be distance because it wouldn't work. I would never get to see them. They'd be pissed at me for being away every weekend. Yeah. So it's, like, just super easy. But there's, there's definitely stuff that we do that... Like, you have to be really good at communicating. Obviously, you have to trust each other. That goes without saying. But you have to be really good at communicating because when it started, neither of us had done distance before. Or right. I think he might have, but I hadn't. And it would be like, when you're together, if you did something that pissed the other person off, we wouldn't talk about it because we'd be like, we don't want to have a fight when we're not together for very long. Yeah. But then we would just, like, bottle it up and get pissed off at each other. So now, if anything goes wrong, if either of us, like, annoy each other at all, we have to be like, hey, this is what you did. Talking about it, ten minutes later, we're good. And yeah. it's like we have to be really like upfront about that because otherwise it can just like make everything really sour. I think, but Definitely. I don't know. I find it easy. People are always like, "Is distance hard?" I'm like, "No, it's kind of great. It's exciting." Yeah. Um, I surprised Blaine last weekend. He didn't know that I was going to be here for the blood. You should tell that story. Aww. It's super cute. It's really cute. So many people knew though, and I was really panicking. And also, was... like this episode's coming out a little later, so it was at this point a couple weeks ago. Couple, several weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Early March. <laughs> yeah. 
an undisclosed amount of weeks ago. Um, <laughs> so I, I was flying to South by for the Ready Player One premiere, and I only found out like five days beforehand that I was going to be doing that. And I was like, okay, well, I can be there that Friday, and I'm pretty sure that that's when the Bloodfest premiere is because Blaine's kind of been talking about it. So I messaged like multiple people and was like, hey, can I get into this to just show up and surprise him? Knowing that I was also coming the week after, I just like, <laughs> was like, I want to show up. So I think I got tickets from Will, but I ended up asking, I don't know, 10 people and had to be like, what time is it? The time got delayed. Like, where am I going? Yeah, everything like, got switched Is there a meet and greet? Like, what is happening? Because I couldn't ask him any of those questions without it being like, why are you asking so much about this? Yeah. So I just showed up to the premiere and uh, I was talking to Ezra, actually. I was just like, I was really nervous. Like, and I don't get nervous very often, but I was super nervous to like blow the surprise somehow. And my concern was that he would see me from across the room before I saw him and be like, hey, what's up? And he'd be like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. So I was waiting in the theater. He walks through the door and then goes up the stairs. It's like kind of behind a wall. So I just walked up behind him and held his hand. Like I just, <laughs> just held his hand. You and his, got in for a booty squeeze. I did actually do that first. I touched his butt and then held his hand. And his first reaction was, whoa, hey. And then he was like, oh, hey. And then there was a second realization that was like, oh my God. He was oh. just like, it was the cutest thing ever. I he thought said he that like really all of a sudden excited. he felt like a hand in his hand and he was like, this feels familiar. <laughs> like, what? He like clearly panicked at first and then was like, hey. And then was like, oh, hey. And it was, it was super cute. It was very happy. It's adorable. It's the first time we've ever surprised anyone and I was I got really surprised good. one time by a long distance relationship it was actually for my birthday Bernie flew um, the person I was seeing from San Diego to Austin Aww. and it was funny because it was like a week after RTX so I had just seen him which is like again like you had just seen this person yeah but um, it was at Bernie's place and I'd come around the corner and everyone's like surprise and I was like oh my god and then my boyfriend at the time was there and I was like Oh my God, like my brain <laughs> couldn't register at first yeah. that he was there. Like I'd so seen everybody and I was like reacting to them and like being surprised that it was a surprise party. And then I saw him and I was like, what? It's so cute though. Doesn't, yeah. Didn't he do that once? Or there, was a, there was like an Instagram post that he made and there was a picture of you too where like he said that he, I guess you had been turning around facing the other way and he came up to you and he was like, hey, can I yeah. take a picture? And you were like, ah, oh, and you turned like, around. It kind of counted. Like I knew he was in, right, we right, were at Seattle right. for PAX and he just like came up to me at like a fan party we were having and just uh, was like, hey, can I take a selfie? So there's like a, and it was really obnoxious and if it had been a fan, I would have been like, hey, that was kind of important. But he just like took the photo and I was like, as you can see in it that yeah. I like see him in the reflection. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. It's cute, man. Yeah. I think fun. to make a long distance relationship work, I think both people need to be equally understanding of the other people's, the other person's priorities. Yeah. Like what they have going on. And also being equally busy is a huge help. Because Independent. Like, I, I think anyone yeah. who is very codependent in a relationship, it probably wouldn't work. And it is yeah. really hard. Like if I'm sad, then that's the time when I'm like, fuck, I wish you were here. And it does make it really difficult, but I think it, just some people probably aren't predisposed to having a long distance relationship, and that's yeah. fine. Too. I feel like it's so much easier now too, though. Like, what you can Skype, you can you know you can do all these things. Yeah. Um, my parents worked together for four years long distance before they got married, and that was like, oh damn, what like seventies, eighties? So like, I can say seventy years ago, and I was like, <laughs> damn, <laughs> yeah, quite old. Yeah, yeah, working yeah. it. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, and it was a time where like they have, it's really cute though because they have like so many letters that they wrote to each other during Aww. that time. Um, and now if you bring it up, my dad's like, you didn't fucking write any of that. <laughs> I'm hard as um, nails. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, I can imagine, because I've, I've dated long distance before and it was, it never worked out just because it was like, eh, like I know this isn't gonna work out and definitely, you know. Yeah. But that's always an interesting thing that I took from them was pretty much the same thing that like they were both super busy um, they, but they communicated one way or the other. Yeah. You know? Communication and being independent, I think, are like two huge yeah. factors. Yeah. What about you? You said you've been in some? Uh, just one. It wasn't really like a dating relationship, but it's this girl I met in Mexico uh, when I was like 13, 14. Oh, and damn. Just like hit it off. That was some of my first stuff that I've done. Um, <laughs> Why didn't it work out? Uh, she lived in another state, and I, both, both of us didn't live it's in Mexico. It's not like you have the money to fly to. <laughs> See no. each other. Well, I was gonna uh, say if yeah, you were that age. young. No, no, no. Uh, out by so we just stayed in touch for ten years, and we never oh, saw crazy. each other in between that time. And then we finally saw each other, like, and in, in year number ten. Holy shit! Yeah, it's a great girl. That's cool. Yeah, met up, like, went to her home state, hung out with her for a little bit. Um, wonderful person. Was like a curator at a museum, Damn. which was amazing. Can't say the city, but it's a big city. It's a big deal. She's super smart. Anyways. <laughs> she's like dating, uh, she's very happily with this guy in Colorado and just good friends, but it's like, you never know 
it's a really good example for never burning bridges. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just like always the hope that you will meet a person again, like you're going to run into him again. Yeah. It took 10 years, but it was totally worth it. Did I tell you, did I tell you the story of this uh, Uber driver I had one time? Mm -mm. About this uh, like woman he fell in love with in Hawaii when he was a teenager? So it was, I want to make this into a movie. It was like, <laughs> I was crying when he was telling me the story in the backseat. I was just like, oh my God, I never want to leave this car. Um, but he was like probably in his like mid 60s or so. Um, and he was saying that he was uh, getting ready to move to Hawaii. And I was like, oh, wow, like, what are you doing out there? And he goes, well, I'm, I'm getting married. And I was like, well, how did you guys meet? What is this? And he goes, well, um, when I was young, when I was a teenager, me and my family moved to Hawaii. And I met this girl. Um, but I was, like, in the Army at the time. So, like, we had a really intense summer and fell madly in love with each other. But then I had to move away. Lost touch. Didn't talk ever again. Um, I got married. Had three kids. Moved on with my life. Uh, and then me and my wife, our, our marriage didn't work out after 33 years of being married. We ended that. And then all of a sudden I remembered this girl in Hawaii that I had fallen in love with and thought, I need to contact this woman. Um, oh. Didn't have any of her information, didn't know how to contact her, but he realized that all old people have landlines. <laughs> so he's like, maybe if her mom is still alive, I'll call her mom and leave a message. So he found uh, her mom's information, uh, left a message, went straight to voicemail, and then he said he left his number on the answering machine. And about half an hour later, he gets a text message from a, an unknown number, and it said, be still my heart. And it was that woman in Hawaii who wasn't married, never had kids or anything like that. And like they just started talking and, and like fell madly in I love again. I have goosebumps again. Yeah, right I know, same here. <laughs> <laughs> and so like he like moved back to Hawaii to like go be with her. That's amazing. And I was like, oh my god, you never okay. know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, isn't that that statistic that you're supposed to, like, oh, most people will meet the person they're going to marry before they're 20? That's like that happens for a majority of people really? in the U.S. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm sure that, like, includes a lot oh. of small towns where people don't really leave. Them, yeah. But. yeah. I mean, it's true for most of my family. My parents met when my mom was 18. My brother met his, my oldest brother met his wife when they were 15. Maybe it's a lot of people meet in college. Yeah. yeah meet yeah. college, high school, earlier. Yeah. yeah. Different, different time, too. With yeah. Dating apps and social media, people have learned that there's a huge pool. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. if you lose a fish, you're going to get another fish pretty quickly. Just kind of messed up. It yeah. is, but it's the times we live in. <laughs> yeah, my granddad uh, proposed to my grandma on the night that they met. It was at, like a police ball, and he met her and proposed to her. And she was like, no, you idiot. But then they got married nine months later. And it's like, that oh story just couldn't exist now because you're so yeah. aware of, like, the other fish in the sea. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, it's the cutest thing, and they were married for such a long time. But it's like... That, that now would just be like, yeah, but I'm talking to these three bitches on Tinder. And it's like also, <laughs> if someone, like, if you meet someone today and I meet someone, I go to HB and I meet someone, they're like, I'm going to marry him. Like, I'm going to call a fucking cop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Restraining order? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't come near me. I'm how just did, trying to get my lettuce. But now I'm curious, how did he know? Like, did he just see her and was like, I'm in love with like, this woman? So he passed away a couple years ago, but he, the story he would always tell would just be like, her eyes were just the best thing that I had ever seen. And it's, it's so cute. And, <laughs> like, up until he passed away, he was still just, like, they had the most adorable relationship ever. And I just loved it at the first night. She was like, no, you, I'm obviously <laughs> not doing that, you fucking weirdo. And then nine months later. Yeah. That's wow. such a, there's such a romanticism about periods of time like that that I think is like, it just it doesn't exist anymore, you know? I think it could exist for some people. Some people still have those like extremely romantic stories. Yeah. yeah. But something like that. It's, it's hotter rare. now. It's yeah. Rare. Yeah, because if that happened to me, I'd be like, who the fuck are you? I'm like, yeah. oh, what the hell? This is a fake guy. I don't know. <laughs> I spotted. You're like, oh, thank you. My answer is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, before we move on to our box of issues, I would like to thank BioClarity for sponsoring this episode of Always Open. Uh, this episode of Always Open is brought to you by BioClarity. Finding the right skincare routine is super important. Taking great care of your, great care of your skin, <laughs> I promise I could read, uh, can boost your energy and radiance. I love using BioClarity. It makes my skin feel super soft and look really healthy, which is very important as I'm aging very rapidly. <laughs> BioClarity delivers glowing, clear skin by reducing redness and boosting your natural beauty. You could use it twice daily without worrying about excess irritation, and there's no harsh chemicals. BioClarity is packed with clarifying botanicals and new Floralux. It's naturally derived from chlorophyll, yes, the green stuff plants need, and is proven to soothe away blemishes. BioClarity is delivered straight to you and is an easy to use three-step skincare ritual that's 100% vegan plus gluten and cruelty free. 
Use the three steps, cleanse, treat, and restore, and take care of your skin. BioClarity also offers a skin smoothie with Hydrate. It's a lightweight, breathable moisturizer designed for even the most sensitive skin. Start a healthy habit and get glowing, clear skin. Just go to bioclarity.com. Our listeners will get their first month for only $9.95, excuse me, plus free shipping. That's a $20 savings, and it comes with a 100% risk-free money-back guarantee. But you need to enter our code OPEN. That's bioclarity.com and use the code OPEN. $9.95 plus free shipping. Awesome. Thank you, BioClarity. Open. Open it up. Tyler just... Yeah. He does that. Yeah. It's coming back. Sometimes. Coming, bringing it back. Bring bringing it back. back. <laughs> All right, well, let's finish things up with our box of issues. I'm busting this one out again. Ooh, I love the mailbox. The mailbox is really cute. It's so cool. It's so cute. We, have, we still have the picture up. We here. have so... Oh, yes. Our lovely mother and son. It's on the, right the other right side there. of Alana's right head. Right there. <laughs> so cute. So I'm going to go like this. Shink. Oh. <laughs> I guess I have put, to take it out first. You're not putting anything <laughs> in there. You're taking it all out. Such, oh, I love it. such a satisfying noise. <laughs> There's like little magnets there. Oh, cool. Oh, you know. yeah. I'm gonna put this back up. Engineering. Again. Magnets. So fucking cute. All right, let's see what this one's from. All right, this one's from Ben C. And it starts with Is it possible for a guy to be too nice in a relationship? Recently single, but in my past relationships, I haven't dared to say no for the vast majority of things as I don't want to upset my significant others. I'm a very easygoing, generous person as it is, but it's heightened when it comes to a significant other, but I'm now wondering if I've been too nice. My lack of saying no is something I've been aware of for a while, but I'm conflicted between saying no just to avoid being too nice and being true to myself and being easygoing. So he's not saying that he agrees to everything because he wants to, he's just like, I just don't. He just doesn't care. care. Right. I understand that mentality because I'm kind of like that when it comes to a lot of things in a relationship where I'm just happy to be with that person. So if they're like, what do you, do you want to go here? Or you want to go there? I'm like, okay. I do that too. Yeah. But I don't think that's necessarily nice. Yeah. Like I think you can be too nice. Like if someone's like too flattering and you, and you become a pushover and you're not saying no because you like don't want to be yourself. I think that is a problem. Mm -hmm. Like if you, you don't want to do something, but you're like, yeah, of course, and then you hate it. It's like, I think that is bad, but if you're just an easygoing person, that's just like you being you, and that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, there's Depends a difference the between, nice. yeah, between like just trying to be nice, trying to please someone, and just being like, I don't care either way. Yeah. But I think at the same point, at like saying that you don't care and just going with the flow sometimes, like, frustrates people it could be frustrating you know instead of just like just make a decision just like you well know. that's like the dinner meme of like no what do you want to eat right what do you want to eat yeah right <laughs> like i totally or what do you want to do today it's like i'm cool doing anything i don't care yeah. no, but kill me <laughs> yeah uh, so i don't know i mean i i can see how people like i i had a friend who dated someone for a while and when they broke up um you know i was like well what's going on and, and she was like well she we just never had any spark or any conflict and it was like what do you mean she's like oh well, she was too nice like it was just everything was too good all the time and I was like what the fuck does that mean yeah that seems insane to me yeah, yeah. And that, yeah. no that's exactly the thing and I was like what what do you mean she's like well there just wasn't like any passion for anything because everything was always so good all the time mm. Mm. I call you know? bullshit on this one so yeah. I've, I've had <laughs> people criticize me um in my first relationship my six year one I had mentioned to people that he and I never argued we never had any arguments we got along great like we disagreed on some stuff, but we never like fought or got angry with each other. And they're like, oh, that means there's no passion in your relationship. And I was like, there's plenty of fucking passion. Like, we love each other, our relationship's very intense. We just agree on a yeah. lot of things. Um, but the person's like, no, like when you don't fight, it's an indication of no passion. Right, yeah. Like, no, nah, that's just shitty. Yeah. <laughs> I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with it either. So, I mean, I think it is possible to be too nice only if you're doing it for like just trying to please the other person constantly instead of also right. making decisions for yourself. If you're not being yourself, I think it's a problem. And I think that people can detect if you're being fake and it can be frustrating. So I do think that that's an issue. But I yeah. think if you're just like an easygoing person, you shouldn't change in reverse because you're right. worried about being too easygoing either. So. Just say no yeah. to everything. Yeah. yeah. You want to go to dinner? No. Mm -mm. But why? No. No, I'm no. good. Thank you. What do you think? I think the ladies nailed it. I think you guys, uh, you covered all the bases. Have you ever had this issue of trying to be too nice or too easygoing? Yeah, I'm not for being too nice. Um, girls like a little bad boy. It's just like, <laughs> they like a little aggressive. Like, the, what else do you like? Um, <laughs> hey, now. 
<laughs> That's not very nice, all right? You, <laughs> Sorry, need, to, you mean, need to be too I nicer to be, now. I need to be okay? too nice, yeah. No, not I don't know. Nah, it, it, yeah. <laughs> I read this article once and just made me think of that. That's like, uh, if a woman is like vacuuming or doing more housework, it probably means that she's ovulating. And it was it was like on a like male specific website, and so and I quote it all the time. And the ending line is like, and if this is happening, maybe you should tell her because women love it when you teach them things, especially about themselves. Wow. And it's just like the most cringy like thing that I've ever read. Oh. <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah. I've read the Cosmo things before, where like you know it's like put a donut on his dick while you're. A lot of weird hand job. job suggestions in that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. Blindfold his eyes and then also tie his balls up with a little ribbon and then also put ice in your mouth Whoa. and then also and then put an icy hot on his dick and then bust out a grapefruit. Rub his dick. Well, yeah, obviously that one. Everybody knows that. So grapefruit technique. Grapefruit. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, I would say don't change. Don't change yourself. If nah. you're if that's who you are, then that's who you are. And like, you know. I would say just. Yeah, be yourself. Like, yeah. don't try to be too nice or too mean. Just make decisions. Obviously, you want to make each other happy in a relationship, and like sometimes that involves compromise, and maybe like every now and then sacrificing what you want to do for what someone else wants to do. Right. Um, but like being like people want to be with someone who loves them and treats them well. Yeah. That's something I think everybody wants, and like. No one wants to be with someone who treats them like shit or yeah. like he wasn't puts them mean down. Enough to me. <laughs> yeah, he didn't no. say no to my ideas enough. That doesn't make sense. Well, some people do. Some people are like that though. Some people like want the conflict and they want the fighting, which. What well, always leads to good sex, but like, um, yeah, the too nice thing. I remember specifically one time I was too nice. Yeah. I was in a car on the way home from downtown, and a favorite song of mine came on the radio, and I turned it up a little bit, and she said, "I don't want to listen to that right now." <laughs> <laughs> and I let her change it. Mm. I was furious. <laughs> like, what song about, was it? I was so it? fucking yeah, now I, now upset. I have to know what song it is. It was just a Bob Schneider song. It was it's Honey Pot. It was the summertime. It was a good song <laughs> to fucking listen to. And she fucking. I was like, what is the big deal? We're almost two minutes. Can I just listen to the fucking song? Yeah. And she didn't let me do it. Mm. That was me being too nice. I, I should have been like, no, that's... fuck you. I'm gonna listen to the song. Oh, but also being too nice in this situation probably avoided conflict. It did avoid, yeah. So it and might have been fuck, a good idea to... We didn't fuck that night. Because you, you didn't get to... She got to listen to whatever. It, it was one of those things <laughs> where she movie. just changed it to another station. She didn't even have a particular song she wouldn't let us listen to. She just changed the fucking station. Is it because you wanted to listen to that song? And she I just wanted to listen to that song. She just didn't want you to be happy. She didn't want me to be happy. Fucking bitch. God. <laughs> Well, I'm you're really clearly <laughs> very over this, and you've dealt with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, you haven't yeah, internalized it's like, it at all. I don't even care about the no, other shit in the relationship. That <laughs> night specifically. Could we bring you on every week to have Tyler's rant session? Now I'm, now I'm gonna like. God now damn. Now every time Laura wants to listen to Harry Potter in the car, I'm gonna have to think twice about asking her to turn it down. No, you should like, just be like, like I don't want to listen to this song right, <laughs> right. now. I just like sometimes like I don't want to listen to an audio book. You know, sometimes you just don't want to listen to Honey Pot. Purposely I mean, being mean. There's a way That's to go it about was. it though. Like if you're like, oh, I don't really feel like listening to this right now. Do you mind like turning it down? Also, it's just a song in a car. <laughs> also, it's just a song. <laughs> like who if, fucking like, cares? There's a there's still a way to go about it that she should have gone. God, I don't man. know how angry you're getting about it. <laughs> but this is a fucking song. Oh, man. See, it's funny because I was like, oh, you avoided probably having a fight, but now it's all bubbling to the surface <laughs> yeah. right now. I hold that. shit in for years. Don't do that. Yeah, it's bad. Don't do that. It fuels me. Do you listen? Do you, want do you come hear on that? To just rant I'll a come bit? around. Do you hear that song now and you just like break shit? Oh, I can't listen to it now. It makes me so fucking mad. <laughs> Can we play it on the outro? As we, <laughs> as we go so out? fucking mad. <laughs> we'll start the post show. With Sorry. <laughs> well. God. Well, any final words for Ben C about being too nice? You know, Ben, if you're being true to yourself and if you're being who you want to be and who you say you are, then like just go with it. Do you, bro? I think yeah. my final note is like the guys that I've seen who have referred to themselves as nice often weren't actually nice. They were just possessive and mistook that for nice. Mm -hmm. So that's why that word is always like kind of weird to me. And that yeah. people who are like, but I was so nice. I'm like, no, no, no. You texted me angrily if you didn't know where I was and you thought that that was nice because it was like you cared. Whereas to me, it was just aggressive and weird. And so it's, it's, he doesn't seem like he's doing that, but the word nice is like, what do you mean by nice? It seems like he just yeah. thinks he's too easygoing, maybe. Which is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Be chill. Chill is good. And yeah, sometimes it's just maybe if the person's not okay with it, they're not the right person for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You need to listen to whatever song you want. Yeah, Ben. Whatever song is in the car you, you want to listen to, you get to listen to it. Including Honey Pot or whatever the fuck you said.
Yes. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Honey pot? Nailed it. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Well, thanks, Bensie. If you have a question for us on Always Open, you can email us, alwaysopen at roosterteeth.com, and we'll, we'll do our best to give you our expertise on whatever subject material that you're sending us, which we don't have a lot of. Like changing <laughs> songs and cause. We've we got should, you. Yeah, our, our, <laughs> don't our let advice. it happen. Please don't actually take our advice anywhere. Just listen to it, take it in, and Just, form your own opinions yep. on it, because. Take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> there you go. I pointed to the salt, but it was out of frame. Hey. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining yeah, us, Alana, especially thank Alana. You thank you. It's been fun being here. Cheers, Charlie. my friends. Drink's completely empty. Cheers. That's okay. <laughs> it's not like it's bad luck or anything. Oh, you made it. Intentional. <laughs>